Hey there, Mike Dixon here, video number six of Excel Bootcamp. So in this video we're going to talk about using a couple um, specific functions, one called the if function and the other one called the vlookup function. These two functions are used all the time. Um, once you learn how to use them, you'll probably find uh, times where you're going to use them all over the place. So first let's start with the if function. So the if function, um, well it looks like this, so we just type equals if Right, just like any other function and put a little bracket and then you can see right away we have uh, three different um, values that uh, need to be put in here so the first one is some sort of logical test right so a logical test has to have uh, one that can only have two answers it either is true or false essentially right so uh, you you just give it some sort of condition right so like you could say for example you could say does this value over here under gender equal and then in parentheses male? Right? That would be a logical test. So if it does equal male, then you type, type comma and it says, well, what do you want to do for true? Type something in there and then hit another comma and say, what do you want if it's false? So that's it. So this is the logical test is the first thing we have to do. So let's do another logical test. The one we're going to do here is actually this retirement savings. What I'm going to say is if this retirement savings is less than some number, I'm going to use this number right here, $100,000. I'm going to hit F4 to lock that in because I'm going to copy and paste this down. That's what that's my logic test. If this number is less than $100,000, then what I want, what do I want it to be true? Well, I want you to actually write poor. If it's not less than $100,000, that means it's actually greater than $100,000. I want you to write good. All right, so I wrote these two over here before. So basically what I'm saying is I'm categorizing people who uh, retire their retirement savings and I'm saying that if you had less than $100,000 your retirement savings is, is poor. If you had more than $100,000 it's good. That's it, right? So that's what this logic test is doing. So we hit enter. This person is good, right? So now I can use this little, before I do this actually I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to lock these two in, right? N3 and N4. I have to make sure that those uh, have uh, absolute references so I'm going to click in the middle there and hit F4. Right, if I don't, when I copy and paste, these guys will just get moved down, right, which isn't what I want. All right, so let's use my little trick over here, double click, paste that all the way down. So now let's, let's see if this is working. So first of all, let's look at this next one. So these all look good. The colors all seem to be lining up. Uh, we can say, so this is this person had $88,000, so that is less than 100000 so that means they have poor. All right, so that's our first if, right? So that's all an if will do, right, is that you give it some sort of logic test, and the logic test has to either be one or the other, right? Like either true or false. That's it. You can only you can only have two options. Um, and then you can say, well, if it's true, you can give it something to do. If it's false, you can give it something else to do, right? So I just pointed it at a cell if it's true. But you could type something else in here. You could say, well, if it's true, then what I want you to do is we gotta take this number and multiply it by this number, uh, you know, and then divide by something else. Like you can put whatever you want in there. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Same with false, right? So let's I'm gonna hit escape. Remember hit use that escape, I can type a bunch of junk in there and hit escape, it's like undoing. So there's this other idea called what we I call nested ifs. So this is how we can get the if statement to actually consider more than three, more than sorry, more than two options. Because I said a regular if, it's either true or false, that's it. Nested if will let us just kind of think about more than one uh, well, more than two options, right? So here's the idea. So here's another kind of category where we say uh, if you have more than 100,000, you're good. Now you have you have good uh, retirement. If you're between 50 and uh, 100,000, then that's better. Between zero and 50, that's poor. All right. So here I have three options. How would I work that? Well, let's see. Here's the nested if statement. So I start with an if, and I'm going to start with my regular logic test. I'd say, okay, if something uh, over here, my retirement savings is less than $50,000, then what do I want it to do? I want it to be poor. And that means that you have a, a poor retirement savings, right? Less than fifty thousand dollars poor retirement savings. If it's false, then what I want it to do? Well, I want it to actually reconsider something else, right? Yeah. So what I want it to do is say, okay, I want to put another if statement inside here. That's what we call it, a, a nested if statement. So within the false, I'm going to put a whole another nest, a whole another if statement inside there. So I'm going to start over again. Type in if. Say now again, if this number is less than, oops, less than, uh, less than a hundred thousand, 
then what I want it to do is I want it to become, I want it to display better, right? So comma, and click on better, the value of true. Comma, and what do I want it to do otherwise? Otherwise, tell me that it's good, because otherwise that means that you must have a, over $100,000. So let's like sort of evaluate what's going on here. So here, start all the way over the beginning. So I'm saying if this number right here is less than $50,000, I better lock that in, hit F4. Then what I want you to show is this thing that says poor, right? Hit F4 there too, lock that in. Otherwise, I want you to do a whole nother test, right? Because this is how I'm going to get it to do more than one thing. Otherwise, what I want you to do is look again at this number, right, E4, and see if it's less than this guy, F4, I'm going to lock that in, less than 100,000. Then what I want you to do is tell me that it's better. If that's not the case, then I want you to tell me that uh, then it's good, right? Oops. Uh-oh, start over again. If this number is less than this guy, F4, then this guy, F4. Otherwise, start another one. If this number is less than 100,000, lock that in, F4, comma, then it's better, F4, lock that in. Otherwise, good. Right, and then I can just hit enter, but really it's two, uh, I have to put uh, two of these uh, brackets in there, right? Because this this if statement right here is nested inside of this bigger if statement. Right? So hit enter. Now let's copy this down and see if it works. All right, so here's a better. Uh, so good is uh, above 100,000. Here's better, so that's between 50 and 100, so that's right. And here's a poor below 50, so that looks good. So let's see if we want this. Like, here's 64,000. So this should be better, right? Yep, so right there, better. Good. So it looks like it's working. So something's goofy right here. Uh, why is that showing up as zero? Oh, so there's something I didn't lock in, right? It's this very last one. Let's see, I can show you. Next time it got dragged down. So it's these ones that say zero right here, it was like displaying this way down here. <laughs> isn't what I want. So it's because I didn't lock in this last guy. So let's hit a 4 there. Double click that. Make it go all the way down. Now that's fixed. All right. So that's great. So this is, I can use this nif this uh, sort of nifty trick of if statements nested over and over again. Like I could put another nested if statement right here in the third one, and I could keep doing that forever and ever. So for example, here is sort of a bigger categories, right? So every $10,000, I have a different description. These descriptions are really dumb. I just made them up. Um, so this would take a lot of coding if I were to do this in a whole bunch of if statements. So instead there's this other thing called a VLOOKUP, right? So let me show what a VLOOKUP does. Equals VLOOKUP. A VLOOKUP essentially uh, is, uh, is going to allow you to do what we just did without using uh, kind of a whole bunch of uh, nested lookups. So uh, nested ifs. All right, so this is what it's asking for. So it's asking for some lookup value, and then you're going to tell it where to look for this, right? So I want to look for this number right here, hit comma. Where do I want you to look? Well, I want you to look in this whole table, right? So I have to actually not just highlight the numbers, but I have to highlight also what else, uh, what else I want it to return, right? So this is now going to be considered an array, right? I hit F4 to lock that all in because I don't want it to be moved around. Uh, this column index number is what you want it to return once you find something. So essentially what it's going to do is going to go find this number, 193,000. It's going to go look to see where it fits over here. Right? And then you tell it which column in your array now. Right? So this is only a two-column array. So no longer are we talking about these columns. We're not talking about this little array has it's like essentially its own database. right? And there's two columns in it. Which column do you want to return once I find something? I want it to be the second column, right? So one, two. Later on, we're going to use this one and have a whole bunch more columns. But in this case, we only have two columns. Comma, and then it says there's two different options. Do we want an approximate match or an exact match? So I actually want an approximate match this time, right? Because there's we're not going to find the exact number in here, just the approximate number. So I can either type, uh, let's see, true, I think, or I can type in one, which is the same thing. One is also true. Um, let's just type it true. Hit enter. All right. So what's going on here? So this person has more than a hundred thousand dollars. So that means he's planning on living forever, right? So that's what the VLOOKUP tells us, because it goes and says, well, actually, it's bigger than a hundred thousand. So the option must be this. So now what it's going to say, if it's between ninety and a hundred thousand, it should be this one. Maybe your kids will be rich. Between eighty and ninety, you should be this one. Start a new career. 
all the way up. If it's between zero and ten thousand, then your description is plan on dying young. So let's uh, let's double check this. Looks like it's pretty good. So that's it. So we could have done this again with a whole bunch of nested if statements. Let's make sure this is right. So here's an eighty-eight thousand. So let's look. That's between eighty and ninety-nine. So it should be something like start a new career on American Idol, right? Eighty and ninety. So there it is. Start a new career on American Idol. Uh, here's 72, so that's between 0 and, uh, and 10,000, so plan on dying young. Okay, so there's VLOOKUP. Very cool. So here's another. Let's do another VLOOKUP. This one's for exact matches. So in this case, I'm going to use this new data set over here. This one uh, I stole blatantly off of Wikipedia, the source of all true knowledge. Uh, yeah. So anyway, this is they said that this was uh, 19 or no, sorry, 2010 or 2009 data, so it's probably outdated. But here is the number of people uh, in each branch, uh, total military, uh, just the split up by enlisted and officers, um, just the females, and then how many civilians are also in each branch. So let's say, for example, you remember my data set here. I know uh, the branch of each individual. Let's say I want a new variable over here that tells me how many uh, sort of total people are in that uh, in that branch, total military people. Let's just say that are in that specific branch for every single one of these. So I can use the VLOOKUP to do that, right? So let's say equals VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP, this is how we're going to use this a lot. Is when um, you know I have two different data sets, and there's something that's uh, that I can match them on, right? So in this case, there's the branch in both of these data sets, right? And I can match those, and then I can grab something else, right, and put it together. So this is very useful when I have two separate data sets that I want to sort of merge together, right? I want to look for something and something else and put it back together. All right, so what lookup value? I'm going to look up for this branch name, army. Where am I going to look for it? I'm going to look for it in this, this, uh, this array, right? So I just highlighted this. This is now called an array, like it's its own table. So essentially, it's its own database. I could have actually included this. It wouldn't have made uh, much of a difference. Let's do that. Now I'm going to hit F4 to lock that in, comma, which column? Now, now in this case, I could actually return any of these columns, right? Like, so if I put in 2, it will return this column. If I put in 3, it will return this column. 4, this one, 5, 6. This is 1, right? Column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5, column 6. So let's, uh, let's return civilians. How about that? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So column six, number six. Now, in this case, I want an exact match, right? I don't want an approximate match. I want it to actually go and find exactly army in here and then return the civilian number. So I'm going to uh, type in false, or I can use my arrow key to go down and then hit tab. Right? Close that, hit enter. So I was afraid this might happen. So this is going to give us a not applicable NA. And the reason why is because there's a little space, I think, right before this army. I'll fix this. There we go. So these have to be an exact match. So this navy is going to be the same thing. There's a little space in there. I can just sort of, I could tell that there was a space in there. Uh, same with this Coast Guard, right? So if there's a space in there, space army is different than just regular army. So that's why it didn't work. All right, so let's see if this is work. So this first person was from army, and we were supposed to get 243,172. Very good. So now I can copy this down. Let's just check another one, should we? All right, so here's Navy. First one, Navy. Next one's Marine. So let's look at the next two. All right, so here's Navy. This one's for Marines. So let's double check. So here's Navy. Yep, 182, 845. And then here's Marines, 34. Yep, did it. All right, so very cool. So there's a lookup for exact matches. All right, so this lookup, the VLOOKUP, you will, you know, if you're getting into sort of more data set type of things, is very useful. The if statement, for sure, you're going to probably find time to use it all the time. Uh, it's going to help you sort of figure out how to create new variables based on your original data, and uh, you can use it with all kinds of logical type of things, right? So get some practice using these things, and stay awesome.